So we're going to look at the demo of TM Forum's tooling integration of Specmatic, which allows us to validate examples, uh, generate also templates of examples so that you uh, as a developer or designer can fill in into that template, uh, validate each of these so that you know when you've updated, it's all working fine. And then finally, you would be able to integrate it back into the rules file and generate the updated uh, OS specification, the uh, open API specification, and then use that to generate the CTK, the conformance toolkit and the RI. All of this is now completely automated, powered by Specmatic. So that's what this demo is going to get into. So there are two main repos, uh, if you will, in the TM forum uh, thing. One is called the OS tooling. This is where all the tooling lives. And so the work we have done is integrated with this tooling. Uh, and then uh, the other repo is the OS Open API and Data Models uh, repository. This is where all the V5 APIs live. And as you can see, I'm looking at all these lists of APIs that we have, TMF 620, Product Catalog 621, Trouble Ticket, and so forth. So uh, almost about uh, 50 plus APIs uh, live here uh, in the V5 uh, project, okay? So let's quickly get started. So we have predominantly two interfaces through through which you would be able to leverage the UI uh, to the, the tooling. Uh, the first one is we have built in a little uh, menu uh, for folks. And of course, it tells you that when you start the menu, you need to provide the TMF number. So I'm going to use trouble ticket, which is 621. And so at this point, what it's doing is basically, uh, you know, firing up and it presents a little nice menu for you, which you can see here. This is the menu that we bring up and it's supposed to be a workflow that you're supposed to follow. So you start with, you know, essentially uh, number one, which essentially generates the updated OS. Uh, the open API specification and also tells you that uh, it is written this OS specification under 621 trouble ticket and this is the location of this. So if I uh, quickly pop back to the other repo, uh, you will see that under OS, uh, you will see a new OS file has been generated and uh, there are a bunch of updates that have happened to it. So you would be able to look at what those changes are uh, quickly. This quite a few updates. Uh, this is just taking the latest, you know, schemas, common schemas and updated rule file and generating this OS file. OK, so that's step number one, which is generating the OS specification. Now, step number two is to generate uh, examples which are missing. What I'll do is I'll, I'll jump to the visual way of doing this uh, so that you can see. So what I'll do is I'll quickly uh, fire up uh, the tooling and I'm going to be running this locally, but ideally uh, you can also run this as code spaces uh, in GitHub code spaces. So you could also basically go and fire up, uh, you know, from your code up uh, GitHub code spaces. So this is basically saying uh, it's fired up. So let's quickly click there and go here. And what you'll see is this is the UI uh, in which uh, you'd be able to uh, verify if uh, an API is, uh, you know, so you'll see that OS is valid. It's done the verification. Uh, but let's come to this new tab which we have introduced. This is the OS uh, examples tab. Okay. And here you will see if I pick trouble ticket and I say load API specification at this point, what it did, it is basically read the rules file from the rules file. It basically uh, extracted all the examples that are provided and in a very nice visual manner, it tells you uh, what are all the parts that are there in the open API specification? What are the methods that are supported for that particular path? The response code along with their, uh, you know, uh, along with the uh, content type and the file name uh, from where we are basically loading these examples. And finally, it also tells you whether the current example that we have is valid or not. So the red color indicates that it is not valid. The green color indicates that it is valid. And, uh, you know, surprisingly, uh, you know, there are 
this is something that is already in production, right? Uh, but you would see that there are a lot of uh, validation errors that are still there, uh, even though it is in production. And that's the beauty of the tooling is it actually is a fairly in, uh, deep uh, verification tool. It's not a very superficial verification tool. And let's look at uh, one of these examples to understand what has happened here. Uh, so you'd see that uh, in the response body uh, under attachment ID, uh, expected key ID was missing, right? So attachment expects an ID uh, to be there in the example, but in the example, uh, that ID is missing. Uh, you know, and in some cases, attachment type is unexpected, but it is there in the example and so forth. So it gives you a full list of all the errors with the full path. So it's easy for you to figure out what went wrong. And uh, finally, it also gives you uh, the request and the response payload all put together nicely so that it's easy for you to uh, see what is going on, right? And also tells you from which uh, file we basically pulled these right so there is no request for this uh, this is basically just uh, standard uh, but in terms of the response it was pulled from the operations uh, sample from here right this is all referred in the rules file and so we are reading the rules file and being able to uh, generate these examples together uh, so if i quickly pop back into this what you will see is a new folder has been created here inside the os it's called the examples folder this is like a working directory for you which basically uh, takes all the examples nicely puts it here so you can quickly work on these examples and that's the path that is being referred over here uh, if you see this is referring to the examples uh, you know json path okay and right now this is obviously invalid you'll see a whole bunch of errors uh, that are there um, let's look at some more uh, interesting examples here right so i'll quickly pop into this uh, and let's go here and you'd notice that uh, you know the key named request res date uh, resolution date right essentially i think there's a typo the date has got slapped in between uh, when it should not be uh, and that's what basically it's complaining that this is unexpected so let's uh, let's quickly pop over here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to search for uh, this and you'd see that this is present in two files uh, so let's quickly get rid of this typo i think this accidental date got slapped in and let me just replace this in all files and now let me validate this example again okay there's still errors but you will notice that the first uh, error that we had has now been addressed right with the change that we've made so this is how easy it makes this whole uh, cycle of identifying the problem fixing the problem validating so you can go through this uh, you know in an iterative process and try and address uh, you know each of these challenges uh, there is one other example let's quickly look at that before we uh, jump ahead and that is uh, this example where it's basically saying that for uh, trouble ticket specification uh, retrieve example right uh, these ref type is actually not expected you, you know the ref type as per the schema you you're not supposed to have a ref type inside a related party okay so i'm going to quickly just uh, select this file uh, and let's then uh, jump over here let's open that file and you will notice that in the response body uh, related party there is a ref type okay and that's what this guy is complaining that this ref type is actually not expected as per the schema so i'm going to get rid of this all right and then let me validate this and hooray right this is now successful so this says this is a valid example so we've got uh, one of these now uh, turned green right uh, so like this, we would have to go and address each of these problems in a fairly visual manner, uh, which is much easier to deal with. Uh, of course, I'm not going to bore you with trying to fix all these details. I already have done that. So I'm going to quickly, uh, like a bunny, going to jump and get uh, the changes uh, copied over. Okay. So here are all my changes. I'm going to just uh, select the whole thing and just paste that in. OK. And that overwrote all the changes. So let me go back here and let's select everything and say validate everything. 
Wow. All right. Look at the ocean of green, right? So this is, uh, you know, how you would go through one by one and basically fix all of this. Of course, uh, I've jumped ahead here, uh, but you get the point, right? And in case there are certain specifications where examples are missing, you'd also see an uh, option. I'll show that in a minute uh, where you'd be able to generate uh, these uh, example templates for yourself. But now that we've updated these examples, these examples are actually updated in this working directory over here, right? And what we want to do is export these examples back to where they belong, right? Which is inside the documentation operation uh, sample. So we want to basically uh, update these examples over here and update the rule file. Uh, so what I'm going to do is basically click this button here, which says update. Uh, and you know it's blazing fast. You will see that it says rule file updated successfully. Uh, and as you can see, this color just changed, which means that this is now edited or updated. We can also verify this by going in here and you will see that these are all now have edits on them, right? Uh, so, you know, a bunch of fixes they have been done, like, uh, you know, type uh, attachment ref is not correct. This is not a ref. Uh, as you can see, this is actually an attachment and so forth. So the bunch of those changes ID, if you remember, was it was complaining that it's not uh, required, uh, but it was there. So we've removed all of those things. And so a bunch of these changes have been done. And also you will notice that the rule file has been updated uh, with all these changes as well. OK, so. I hope you're with me so far. So this is, uh, you know, step number two, if we actually come here. So. We originally generated the OS file. We generated the examples. We validated the examples. You can come back here and also click three, for example. And uh, this will this both works hand in hand, so you can actually verify whether all these examples are uh, valid or not. And so as you can see, it's saying, OK, all these examples are valid. So validation successful, validation successful, so forth, right? So now we have uh, validated the examples. We've also updated the rule file. We can, you know, again do it here as well if you want. So you can just press the option four, and it just basically updates all the rules file. And uh, as you can see, uh, same thing. It's updated the rule file successfully. So now what we have is we want uh, we have the updated examples. We have the updated rule file. So let's regenerate the OS with these updated examples, right? So I'm going to click five here and generate uh, the OS uh, file, the updated OS file. Uh, and as you can see, it's basically validated all the inline examples after it generated. So once we generated the updated OS file, uh, it also went and validated all the inline examples. This is to make sure that once the OS is generated, it's got all the valid examples in it. And now this is the last step, which I think uh, again, we've been waiting for this moment. Uh, I don't think in the history of TMF we've had an opportunity where uh, we could uh, have the spec and then just click a button and get the CTK and RI generated, right? So I'm going to just click six and uh, boom, right? Like right there, it's like blazing fast. You'd see that it's basically generated the CTK and RI for you. Uh, so let's see what happened. This is in the OS uh, folder, so let's go here. Uh, and what you will see is two new folders have been created here, the CTK folder and the RI folder. When we started, this was not there, right? Uh, but just to be sure, let me go ahead and delete this too, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and press this option uh, six again so that you can see it for yourself. So there and we come back that's generated the CTK and RI. Uh, so what is basically in the RI? There is a simple readme file. This is essentially a Docker compose. So let's open this particular file and it says all you need to do is to run the RI, just basically bring up the Docker image and that's essentially pulling a whole bunch of stuff for you uh, now. Again, I, I, I cleaned up everything just to make sure that you see that this is for real. So the first time you run this, it's going to basically download all the images and then uh, essentially start up the RI, right? So with this, we know that it's loading all the specifications and the RI is up and running. Uh, so now that we have the RI up and running, let's uh, try and bring up the CDK and you guessed it right. Same thing we need to do is just run this 
And with that, we will essentially bring up the CTK. Uh, it will read the specification that we had just created. And there we go. It says uh, five tests, all tests are successful. Right, so the CTK just ran against the RI. It made a whole bunch of requests to the RI reference implementation and then validated the response whether they are as per the specification. And uh, we can also see a report that is generated. So let's quickly go here and let's look at this report uh, in a browser. And so that's your TMF uh, CTK results report, which essentially shows that all the uh, tests that we had have uh, run successfully and uh, you know it's a successful run. So that's uh, one full cycle of uh, generating the OS, uh, you know, generating the examples, updating the examples, validating the examples, then uh, updating the rules file and examples. Uh, generating an updated OS from those rules, files and example, and then generating a CTK and RI from them. All of this all in the one tooling. All right. Uh, one last thing just to before we wrap up, let's pick uh, another uh, example here. Let's take promotion and I'm going to just click load examples. OK, so you would see that wherever examples are missing, you see a generate button, right? So I'm going to click this generate button and you would see that it successfully generated a example. We can go in here and we can view the example that it's generated. So this is uh, the what we were talking earlier that you can actually generate missing examples uh, and it gives you the structure all of these. Of course, these might need a little bit of tweaking. For example, it's generated a random ID and put this. Of course, you would update this, but it gives you the structure. It ensures that uh, you know your discriminators, all of these things are valid, right? And so this eases a lot of uh, problem for uh, the designers and developers to make sure that their examples are valid. And also for the chief architect who has to review these and approve these uh, examples for them, uh, it you know a lot of their issues that they find uh, are uh, you know going to be that class of problems can be completely eliminated because of the built-in validation, right? So this is a true shift left all the way to design where you can validate these examples for yourself. I think with that, pretty much I will uh, pause uh, and look if you have any questions, uh, but this is the full demo of uh, the tooling that we have built and integrated with TM Forum. Thank you.